literally record this right here while well, I got you guys right here. And uh, right over the top of this, just discuss the build basically. So keep in mind, we'll, we'll actually do the build video just right here, essentially. And it's uh, really it, the only difference between my other Reaver build and this one um, is essentially the, the equipment. It's really the big difference. And it really, yeah, it doesn't even come down to really the points. It comes down to um, the weapon. Really buffing your critical chance and damage bonus. That's why I got the Ornate Battle Axe. Um, well, specifically because every category, um, except for the offense category that called for cloth, but if you have dragon webbing, then, it, then that counts as like a leather, and it gives you critical uh, damage bonus, right? So it's, it's still like a leather slot. But it's all offense slots calling for rogue type materials, right? And then, uh, you know, making that as, as good as I can. And then balancing out my my critical chance between my axe, the haft or handle that I put on the axe, and then the pommel that I put on the axe, the little butt end of it, um, all that should get my critical chance up into the high 50s, low 60s, ideally. And then critical damage into the... Um, Oh, between 150 and 200 range. I was I was thinking I might not even get 150, but uh, the way this played out, I was actually able to get it to uh, oh almost 200. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's 183, and I could have sacrificed a little more critical chance. Notice it's only at 54. Um, I could have got my critical chance up into the mid mid to high 60s, maybe even 70, and this would have been down to about 150 or so. I would have had to sacrifice one complete damage upgrade somewhere in my material, you know. And then with my armor, I just kind of buffed a little of both. And like I say, I could lean more um, towards, say, um, damage on one part and then put a lot of cunning in my armor. But um, cunning only gives you a return of half a point critical chance per point. So you honestly get a better return with dexterity, which gives you a full solid point of, of critical damage per point. So that worked out a little bit better. But so my armor was kind of like a mix, you know. I think I sunk cunning to the armor itself, which is the superior prowler set and the hissing wastes, and then um, sunk dexterity into the arms and leggings because I got a much bigger return on the arms and the leggings. So I got a 25% critical damage bonus and a 9% critical chance bonus off just my armor by itself. So that was cool. But uh, a lot of the rest of it came off just the axe. And then um, this was key, was the Mask of the Grand Duchess, which you get from uh, Wicked Eyes, Wicked Hearts. If you, you have to expose um, the Duchess uh, before the um, before the court, um, rather than fighting her, you know, because if you fight her, you get her bow, but if you expose her, then when you're done with the quest and you get back to Skyhold, you'll find this in your inventory, and this is, uh, with the six cunning, this is 15% critical chance, and that's the highest critical chance that I could find uh, in any gear. Um, you could get a, you could make a helmet, one schematic I found that could give you a, uh, upwards of almost 20 points of cunning, but that would still only be 10% critical chance. And so this one essentially gives you 15. You know, 3 from the cunning and then, you know, 12 from the base critical chance. So I chose this one as my ideal headpiece, and it, you know, it doesn't pertain to anything but just the ability to hit criticals more often. That, that's all it really factors into. And then the, um, the accessories are really rogue gear. Uh, this is 10% critical damage bonus, essentially, from dexterity plays a whole lot better with a rogue because a rogue gets uh, attack points um, as well as critical damage bonus from dexterity so kind of sucks that we can't benefit both ways but uh, still it's 10% there and then I just stacked the uh, critical damage rings one of the few rings that actually will stack um, and then I wear a, a belt of focus and that's really for uh, myself I like to rampage more often but also to give to the rest of my party because focus is spread out amongst everybody right and uh, all the rest of my party members are wearing this also. And then, uh, as far as my my party goes, I didn't have ideal equipment for them. But uh, I did find some stuff they could use um, based on the schematics I had. And essentially what I wanted to do was give them the ability to um, crack armor or sunder it. And um, break down enemy armor. And kind of like a rogue, where if you're playing an assassin, you can bypass enemy armors if it's just not there. Well, since you don't have that ability really built into a Reaver, you do have the ability to Sunder or Crack Armor. And so what I did was I, I, I factored that into all of my um, teammates' main weapons, you know, like my one-handed weapon for my warrior and then um, the staves for the mages that I was going to use, and get a good 20 to 30% um, 
per party member, and you're essentially reducing all of the enemy's armor, unless there's some hidden cap in the background, which I'm not aware of. Like, maybe once you've cracked it up to, say, like 60%, you can't go any farther or something. I don't know, but I guess that's possible. But uh, I made sure I, I got some good, decent sundering on, on, their, on their gear. And other than that, I really didn't too much care what they did with their weapons. Uh, they could do a little extra damage, great. But the main thing I needed them to do was get rid of the armor so that um, all my base weapon damage and my critical damage could bleed through. That was the whole idea. And so really my, my honestly, my teammates' gear factored into my build as much, if not more, than the actual gear that my character was wearing. That type of thing. And then, uh, you know, of course, gave them all belts of focus, and then things that per pertain to their abilities, like, you know, whatever strength or constitution for my for my tank, and then, um, you know, barrier rings, or winner's grasp rings, or whatever, you know, for, for, my, for my mages. Winner's grasp also is an absolute key spell um, in a lot of different ways. Um, mainly is that it sets me up for the cross-class combo of Shatter. And um, since the mages really like to spam the crap out of that, whether you have it favorited or not, they can use it seemingly all the time. Um, and if you have two mages in your party, basically any enemy you aim at, before you even get to hit it, it's damn near frozen twice, you know? And so you're going to get the shatter effect all the time. And if you're getting a critical, just with just about every hit, then each time you shatter, you know, that kind of stacks. And so you'll notice those big sexy blue numbers pop up, you know, the flashing blue numbers every once in a while. And those are uh, critical shatters, essentially. And sometimes they can stack up even higher than your regular critical hits. I've, I've hit a critical for 5,000 and got a shatter for damn near 10 grand, you know. It happens sometimes. I guess, you know, if everything just, you know, stacks in the right order. I like to say if, you know, if all the stars are lined up just right, you know, then that cool stuff happens. But uh, this is really the only difference. It's just really primarily gearing my character in the party, specifically like a rogue, basically. And then um, making up for my lack of ability to bypass armor with my teammate's gear and uh, accomplishing somewhat of the same thing. And so, you know, the, uh, the spike damage wasn't quite as high, but the steady criticals all the time made up for it, I think. So there you have it, all right? And so that is more, more of a DPS Berserker build, kind of a little variation, something to play with. All right, guys, I'm out.